There's no objective way to measure pain, correct? Oh, the last uh, 15 years of my career has been spent on doing that very thing. And where do you think we are in that regard? Much further along than I ever would have predicted. So a large chunk of my research early on, my uh, early research was in neuroimaging and pain. It was opening up windows into the brain to see where people were thinking, processing, perceiving, magnifying pain. And I spent much of that publishing work to understand the mechanisms of that. And we haven't yet actually finished our story of pain going up to the brain and what's going okay. on, and we'll, we'll get there. Yep. Over the years, I migrated into the space of developing objective biomarkers of pain. And it's one of those things where I, this is why I love working with young, smart people. Um, I bet against it. I had some young grad students and others who said that they knew, they, they thought they could do this. I told them how you would do it, and I said it won't work. And I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you money to go scan people, and you're going to learn how it doesn't work because failure is a great lesson in life. And they came back and they showed they could do it. And it was all through developing patterns in the brain and using machine learning models to then take that pattern, that signature, and be able to predict in other people whether they were experiencing pain. I didn't think we could do that because of the hugely individual nature of pain. It's so different from person to person. But it turns out that there are core patterns in the brain that represent that experience of pain. And so now we've Others and, and sorry, you're capturing these through what modality? FMR, FMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging. It is a standard MRI that people go into, but we do some fancy pulse sequences. We play some physics tricks where we can uh, see where nerves, the brain's being activated. And we've taken this, we and others have taken this from being able to determine whether somebody is in a state of pain to predicting their long-term trajectory. And we're, we're working right now, a big grant that I have is to actually create composite multimodal biomarkers to predict their future state. We're getting there. So ju let's just start with standard understanding. If you put me into an fMRI machine and I said to you, uh, hey guys, I'm not feeling any pain right now. I feel great. Yeah. And then you scan me and then someone came out and took a hammer to my thumb. Yeah. And I went through the classic response that you described earlier. What would my fMRI show? Yeah. You would see, you'd see rather dramatic increases in activity in brain regions such as the thalamus, the posterior insular cortex, the anterior cingulate cortex, particularly the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex, and a number of other distributed, a number of other areas. And to be clear, this is distinct from the part of my cortex that is the homunculus for my thumb. You would also see it in S1. Yeah. You're right. Um, and indeed, what we've learned through this, that there's no one single pain region in the brain. That's another mistake that was made along the way. We all thought we were going to find a brain region. Yep. Then we can knock it out, hmm. right? Just go cut it out. <laughs> and it turns out that didn't work. And it's not one brain region that generates the experience of pain. It is a distributed network. It's all of these regions coming together and working in harmony. Doing what? generating the experience of pain and then generating a typically a response to that and let me be very clear because there was a lot of controversy when we and others initially published our papers we are not trying to take away the autonomy of the patient and the self report i don't need an fmri to see a patient and know if they have pain i can just ask them and I can use self-report measures to get at it. And I do, that's another part of the research. Where we're working to build these objective markers, this objectifying pain, is not to see what they're in now, 
but can it give us useful information to predict treatment to a particular therapy? Can we use it to predict their future state? Can we use it to predict their vulnerability to an injury or surgery? Those are things that just asking a patient right now, probably not going to get there. Thank you.